He wasn't the first choice for chief, but he is the current one. Earlier this month, the city confirmed Chief Ron Weininger to lead the Boise Police Department. After serving two stints as interim chief, a little more than two years apart, with the retirement mixed in the middle. Weininger's career with BPD dates back three decades. A finalist for the top job back in 2020, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean ultimately chose Ryan Lee from the Portland Police Department. Well, Lee lasted a little more than two years and resigned at the request of the mayor last October. His short term came to a close after we aired a story on the 208 detailing complaints against the former chief. Well, a two time interim now current chief sat down with Andrew Bartline today and Andrew, there's a lot that lands in the chief's well in Chief Weininger's lap. He's got a lot to do to kind of right the ship that they're in right now. Yeah, and he's the one who's really given the reins to be the one to right that ship going forward, partly due to his career here at the Boise Police Department. You mentioned going back three decades, former Chief Ryan Lee, Lee uh, under the spotlight of several complaints, really uncovering a retired Captain Matt Bringleson and racist ideologies as well. So there's a couple different bullet points here that put the department in an interesting spot as Weininger takes the lead on that. Of course, that led to a half a million dollar investigation into the department as well on the heels of what we learned with captain or former captain Matt Bringleson. Well, today, Chief Weininger says he's focused on recruiting, hiring and training three big bullet points, but he knows there's a lot more on his plate. Honestly, if if there were other candidates, I, I'm not aware. I get the feeling that it was more. Uh, I've been here now for six or seven months and and things are going fairly well and I've demonstrated the, the leadership that I think they are looking for again at this time for the, uh, the situation that we find ourselves in. Matt Bringleson has been labeled racist for the things that he's done. You are someone who's part of the fabric of this institution. Had you noticed anything like that within the department through your past almost three decades now being involved with Boise Police? I did not. I did not see any police officer or other employee here in this agency treat people poorly because of their race. I, I did not see any indications that uh, that ideology or the, that thought process was, was involved in any decision making in the organization. Um, I did not certainly know of then Captain Bringleson's uh, ideology or his thought process. Um, so it was, it was a surprise to me, certainly, and a shock. And I know that there are people out there that would say, how can that be? That's impossible. There's no way that's true. You've got to be hiding something or covering something up. And, and I would just say people are very complicated individuals, and um, I, I never saw an indication in any of his work or his approach to people or interactions with people either inside the organization or outside the organization. And I worked with him for 20 years. I did not see that uh, coming, and uh, that, that's really all I can say. What has the police department's involvement been with that investigation? I know there's a statement about cooperating with what they're looking for. Sure, our department has been intimately involved in the investigation. Uh, we have provided uh, a number of documents, a number of uh, pieces of information to the uh, the investigators certainly cooperated and complied with any and every request that has been asked of us. How do you, one, regain that trust, and then two, how does Boise Police become the institution that you would like it to be going forward? How you gain trust or regain trust really boils down to the relationships again, and certainly we recognize that there may be a, a segment of the population who is uh, anti-police or hates the police for whatever reason, whether it's legitimate or not, um, whether it's their cultural upbringing or their experiences that they have lived. Uh, I get that, but our obligation and my expectation for all of my officers who work in this department is that we will treat them with dignity and respect as well. And if we continually do that, and when we fall short, we make amends and we apologize and we move forward and we do better next time and we take corrective action when necessary and we do all the things that we can to ensure that that mantra is repeated in every single contact with every officer and every uh, member of the community, then I think we can move towards regaining that trust. Wondering what your relationship is like with Mayor Lauren McLean. I would categorize it as good. I appreciate her confidence in uh, in me and in our department. You know, I have met with her in the last 
six months almost every week. So we talk about things and priorities and, and certainly have a, a very good professional working relationship together. She did pass you over the first time when you were up for that initial job as chief when you were the deputy. And I believe you're serving as the interim chief uh, proceeding into that as well. Yes. So was that surprising to get a call after you've been passed over for Ryan Lee? It was completely out of the blue when I when I got the call from her in late September. I uh, did not have her contact in my phone, and so it was a it was an unknown number when the phone rang. It was an opportunity to really come back and and I feel like make a difference in the organization. In that initial five minute conversation, we didn't discuss contracts or salary or any of those things. It's really a question, would you be willing to come back and serve as the acting chief for a time? Speaking of time, how much how much time do you think you have left at the tank? You've done this for three <laughs> decades, man. Yeah, I'm uh, getting a little long in the tooth, there's no doubt. I'm uh, uh, older than most of the folks here in the agency. Uh, what I agreed with the mayor is maybe we'll take it six months at a time and see how it goes. So um, I fully expect that I'll probably be here next year at this time, and, and depending on how it goes, uh, maybe longer than that. Time is difficult to come up with. There's not enough time in the day to do all the things that we need to do, but uh, really it's all about um, trying to lead an, an, or, an organization that is diverse and um, one where people make life and death decisions uh, in a split second. So community policing, recruiting, hiring, training, and uh, leadership and accountability, as well as wellness within the organization have been my priorities. We, we feel like these are things that should endure and should last, and, and I feel like they're important. So that's what I'm working on. Chief Weiniger adds he knows success is when BPD is what he calls a destination department, where officers want to work at the department. He says applications are up and their lateral recruitment efforts are showing positive signs as well. I did touch base with the city, Brian, regarding that investigation into BPD on the heels of what we've learned with uh, former Captain Matt Bringleson or retired mm -hmm. Captain Matt Bringleson, his, uh, what's been perceived as racist ideologies. Um, it sounds that they have been invoiced for half a million dollars, which is what they capped that investigation at. Okay. And so it's on pause right now. Any plans to, I guess, reset that or continue it? From what I understood, what the city said is they're going to see what has been uncovered up to this point so far with the money that has been spent and decide what the next steps are forward from there. So perhaps they call it quits or perhaps they go forward with that. We'll have to see. All right. Well, Chief Weiniger, Weiniger says he'll be here at least this time next year. So we'll see. That's what he expects. That's what he expects. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew.